welcome Yamhill to County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we doing? Well, to do we're, today we're doing great. We have uh, Trisha House and we have Linda Sacita from the McMinnville Free Clinic, and we're gonna talk about the reopening that just occurred and uh, things in the future. So Linda and Trish, thank you very much for being here. COVID salute. COVID salute. Oh, okay. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so Linda and Trish, um, we have been closed for about 16 months um, and reopened just last Saturday, which was the 5th of June. Um, do you want to talk about some of the protocols and, and the changes that have happened due to being closed that long? Sure. Um, so the McMinnville Free Clinic had to close down because we didn't have the uh, required PPE and the room and the um, the things that we needed to, to keep our volunteers safe, to keep our patients safe. You know, we're a free clinic, it's 100% volunteer based, and so we don't have a plethora of PPE and supplies and things like that. So unfortunately, uh, we had to make that very painful decision to, to close the doors until we could um, get some handles on things. And now that the vaccinations are out and now that, you know, the hospitals and facilities can, can facilitate those things better and we know what to do now is the perfect time. Um, we got some PPE, we run off of donations. Jackie Cook has been absolutely fantastic with us. She's provided us all of our medical supplies, all of our PPE, the uh, um, Yamhill County Health Department has also provided us um, with PPE. And so that gave us the opportunity to open our doors back up again. That's fantastic. And in the realm of things, where do we reside as a free clinic? The free clinic is located in the uh, First Baptist Church on the corner of First and Powell's. Uh, we are, the church is, is gracious enough to let us use their pull upstairs, uh, the second floor. So we're open on the first and third Saturdays of each month from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. first come, first serve. Um, and you'll have a greeter who looks just like Howie. <laughs> <laughs> or Mark, that cheerfully greets you at the front door and gives you some guidance on uh, where to go after, of course, he's done the COVID screening so we can keep all of our val volunteers and uh, patients safe, of course. Of course. Um, and, and as people enter into those double doors at the Washington Street side, um, mm -hmm. What do they have to expect uh, at, beyond us taking their temperature and asking them the typical COVID questions? I'm sorry, the question is what to expect? Yeah. Oh, well, we would have them uh, go up and talk to um, reception, get registered in, and then they would go out to their cars and wait for their turn. And we'll in turn text them when it's their turn that way there's not, you know, exposure to other patients and so forth. So did you find that anybody did not have a cell phone last weekend that you couldn't contact them that way? We did not. Um, even when people don't have cell phones that are hooked up, they always seem to have cell phones that can tap into the Wi-Fi. The church has Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi. Um, we also have greeters that um, if they don't have a phone, we can say, you know, what car are you in? And we can send somebody to go get them. So we're definitely inclusive for everybody. And there's definitely a way to get a hold of somebody to get them inside and get them be seen. And once they get inside, um, um, what are what's different now? I, I know that we used to send them upstairs and they would have a seat um, and, and wait their turn. Do we still do it that way? We do not. We've got a great new patient flow that uh, not only keeps everybody safe, um, minimizes the time. It's it's a lot more efficient. So what to expect when they get in is they'll check in and they'll have a provider support person, one of our volunteers that will escort them uh, through the whole procedure from entrance to exit. So they'll take them right up to the room and that's where they'll stay. They'll stay in the room. And then we then bring in the triage nurse and then the doctor comes in similar to, you know, everyone else's facility. So 
it uh, takes the, the travel time and the passing back and forth in hallways, um, all that exposure out. Uh, the only exception is um, if they need to be seen by the acupuncturist, the chiropractor, or the prayer that is in a different room. But they're escorted by one of our volunteers the whole time. So it's not hurry up and wait kind of a thing. So what kind of services do they expect to get when they're in that room? What, what can they ask for? Um, they can ask for all of our services. We have obviously the medical providers. We have triage nurses. We have a dental van where we can refer uh, patients to the international uh, dental team's dental van. We've got community resources galore. I think we've got a brochure on just about everything. I just went through all those supplies last weekend. Um, and then of course, we've got the acupuncturist and chiropractor, which are really popular right now. We also have uh, somebody for prayer. If somebody wants to, um, sit and pray with somebody. Um, but really, we're there to serve anything that they could possibly need that we can provide, you know, help with such as, you know, housing or food or prescriptions, you know, the cost of prescriptions. So anything we can help with, um, we, we try to provide. And Tony will be there and she knows a uh, lot of connections in the community to help people. So. She, Tony's got them just right there at her fingertips. She, a lot of resources. Yeah, a lot of resources in the city that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah, there's a lot out there. So if the patient needs labs and we can't do it in-house, do we have an alternative for them? We do. The Willamette Valley Medical Center has been absolutely fantastic. They have been doing our labs for us for free. Um, the patient is not charged. So that's something that the uh, Willamette Valley Medical Center has done for us that we are very grateful for. They've also just opened doing x-rays for us as well. Now we're not an emergency, you know, uh, clinic. So if there's a broken bone or something, we'll send them to urgent care. But, you know, if we need a lung x-ray or if we don't know if it's a sprain or something, you know, sometimes it's handy to have that. But yes, the Willamette Valley Medical Center has been very gracious with us. We give them a lab order and they can walk right into the hospital and get that lab done. And the result will then be sent to us. And then our lead RN will call and contact the patient and give them the results. And if they need a prescription, is there a way to help them with that as well? Yes. Um, so there are some donations out there that have come through and it's limited, but we do have some availability to help people with prescription costs at uh, which pharmacy is it? Um, We're drawing a blank. Can you yeah, tell sorry. it's been 16 well, yeah. months since we've been um, open? <laughs> we can come back to it. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember which one it is. And then we also have lots of connections to find out which prescriptions, you know, all these different pharmacies have different costs. Right. Um, yeah, so we've definitely got the key in on who's got it at a better rate if they have to pay for it. But we definitely do have a prescription plan um, that can help towards the cost. Great. Um, let's talk about uh, Oregon Health Plan for a moment. Do we have some assisters that can help get people on the Oregon Health Plan? So Project Now or Project Access Now, uh, they used to be at our clinics, every clinic, it was great. Right. Unfortunately, you know, funding and things like that, they have, uh, they've terminated that, but we always have um, that website to give to them, www.healthcare.gov. It's very, I find it very user-friendly. Um, we can also send them to one of the Project Access Now's. Um, sometimes they have um, where they can get hooked up with it at Virginia Garcia or the Newburgh Providence Center was doing it for a while. Um, but that's something that our community resources representative has all that information on. So if someone comes in and they feel like they need to be COVID tested, can we do that? No, we do not do COVID testing um, or vaccines, or, or vaccines um, but we know where you can do those things. So sometimes the key is not to know all the answers, but to know where to find the answers, right? right. So the uh, urgent care or the hospital, you know, obviously they'll do the testing and the vaccines. And the inhale county health as well. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. And the vaccines, there's always, you know, clinics going on. So we announced that in the beginning of our, when we do our, our prayer circle before clinic, um, we make sure that reception and everybody knows and we actually have it printed of where those COVID vaccination um, 
our okay. testing is going to be. Yeah, so we've got the resources to tell them where to go. And luckily, the Yamhill County Health Department is holding those vaccine clinics the same time as our clinic. So we can tell them to go right on down there on Saturdays from nine to five. Um, no wait, or not no wait, but no appointment needed, yeah. <laughs> walk in only. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So Tricia, you do medical records. Um, I, I know that we have a new system coming into play here soon. Um, do you want to talk about that? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know that much about it yet. They're still working on it. We didn't use it the last clinic. We stuck, stuck with paper for now. Um, so they're still kind of implementing it and trying to get it to go um, a little faster for us. But I think once it's in place, it will make everything a lot, a lot faster and uh, bring things right to our fingertips along with the, you know, the doctors too. And we all, the provider support and everybody will have um, like iPads and all that. So we can communicate with all of our volunteers as the patient goes through. So I think that'll be very helpful. In sequencing the, the clinic and not knowing how many people are going to come on any given day, as you coordinate all of this effort, Linda, um, what do you find are the challenges? Um, the challenges that we're having right now is we just don't, we need volunteers, obviously. Uh, we really need volunteers. We really need to get the word out. You know, we are a free clinic, no questions asked. We don't ask for ID, we don't ask for income. We need more people to know about this. There's people out there that just don't know and could really use our services. We have wonderful providers and we hate for them to not be busy. They're there to help as many people as possible. So the challenges that uh, we're facing right now are finding volunteers, especially bilingual volunteers. We find that need in our community. Um, finding providers. If we could use volunteers all the time. Um, but me personally, I won't say this for all of uh, McMinnville Free Clinic, I personally would love to see the free clinic open every Saturday. But in order to do that, we need more volunteers, we need more providers, and we need more patients. Right now, it doesn't warrant it. So the challenging part, I would say, as of right now, is getting the word out that we're open again, because nobody knows that, that we're open. So we're, we're working on getting that out there. And I think that patients need to know that it doesn't matter if they have insurance. It doesn't matter what their income is. If they, you know, just find themselves in a hard spot to where they can't pay their co-pay, mm -hmm. then they're more than welcome to come. No questions asked. So even if they just can't afford to take the time off work. Yeah. Or, you know, they're busy during the week and can't go to the doctor. Saturday is a great day to get that done. So we truly help anyone and everyone. That's fantastic. Um, in in the in the time that we were closed down, um, we we served over twenty five hundred people um, from two thousand thirteen through our closure date of early twenty twenty. Um, we want the numbers to go back up, but I was surprised to see on some of the Facebook posts that people didn't even know that we existed. Yes. Oh, yes. And yet Definitely. the word has been out there in multiple ways. Um, yes. Not only uh, in newsprint, but uh, tons of uh, posters and brochures. And Yeah, I think right now we're living in such a, a digital age. And, you know, everyone gets their news and everyone gets their information from the digital world. So with our Facebook posts, you know, our Facebook is blowing up this last couple week, weeks, which is great. Um, as soon as we can get the word out there, it spreads by word of mouth. Also, Trisha, it got the uh, sign over on the church. They are now advertising it for us on the First Baptist. Oh, We've got a ton cool. of support from them. Um, so I think it's just a matter of changing with the times and getting the word out in the uh, digital world, I guess you could say. Do you think this certain segment of society is a little afraid still to come out into the COVID realm, even if they've had their vaccinations? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's all to each his own, basically. You know, everybody has their own feelings about it. So I think we just have to be um, sensitive to everybody's feelings because there are some people that are still a little paranoid and others not so much. So. Well, the reason I ask that is, is such a small group came last Saturday. And, mm -hmm. and I know I realized that we were closed for a long time 
and getting the word out was difficult in, in this environment as well. But to ramp back up to where we were, um, I'm, I'm really hoping that people will become less fearful. Um, and how do we let them know to be less fearful in this medical environment? You know, I don't know that, I, I feel like people are sick of being stuck in their house. I feel like everyone is used to the six feet distancing, six foot distancing, the, the mask. face mask. Um, I don't think the fear as, is nearly as large as it was, you know, this time last year. Um, but I think we do need to make it very clear that we have taken certain precautions um, to, you know, fill those requirements of the COVID precautions. Sure. So I think we need to uh, advertise that on our website. And I think Lori has already done that. Um, but yeah, we just definitely need to put the word out there and let them know how we're doing this so that they will feel a little bit safer coming in. And I don't know if it's necessarily that people are afraid because when we started the clinic back in 2013, I was there and we started out kind of slow and we had to build up. So I think it's just a matter of kind of starting over in a sense. And once everybody finds out that we're back open, I think they'll start coming. So above and beyond Facebook and getting the posters out and the brochures and stuff to the SIT teams uh, uh, electronically, you're talking about digital now, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what more can we do to bring about the fact that we're reopened? Oh, uh, well, clearly we should go on this um, show. My friend Howie has it. <laughs> Oh, um, called how we doing? I think. <laughs> I think as soon as we do that, our problems are all solved. Well, you're you're gonna be a YouTube star now. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'll have your people call my people. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think word of mouth. Word of mouth. Definitely word of mouth. Yeah. And it I is. think, it's and I'm gonna work. Hard. Yeah, and I'm gonna work really hard with the board this year on putting together events and fundraisers. Um, and be a bigger presence in the community as far as nonprofits go. We are very, um, not a lot of people know about us from the nonprofit world to the public, general public. So I think there are a lot of people out there, a lot of businesses that would love to support us. Yeah. And we need to tap into that. And I think that will send, you know, send some words out as well. I, I, a lot of people would love to do this kind of thing. So I've got one last question, and this goes to both of you, and you have a couple minutes each to, to answer it. If you, want, if you could tell people uh, something that you really, really um, think is admirable about this, the free clinic, what would it be? And I'll start with you, Tricia. Um, really admirable. I mean, I guess just the fact that all our volunteers are willing to give their time and they truly care about the patients that come in and want to see them get the care um, that they need. So I think our, I mean, our volunteers without, without our volunteers, we couldn't have our clinic. So I think that's a huge way to steal my thunder. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And now Linda, Oh, great. Now I have the scraps. <laughs> um, what Tricia said is absolutely true. Without our volunteers, we would have no clinic. The beautiful thing about our clinic is it is 100% volunteer run. It is not a government agency. It's not state run. And these people that are here, it's not because they need to do some sort of internship or they need to do some sort of training, you know, to get some sort of qualification. People are there genuinely because they want to be there. And it's a lot to give up a Saturday. It's a lot especially to get up on a Saturday morning at, you know, 8 a.m. We get up 15 minutes prior <laughs> just roll out of bed. Um, no, but it, it really, truly, it, it really is the volunteers. The backbone of this, of this whole clinic um, is it's just a big group of people that want to help as much as they can and help as many people as they can. And being a volunteer in it, it's, I mean, it's extremely rewarding. Oh yeah. I mean, people walk in with so much less hope than they walk out of. People walk out, you know, with smiles, with hope, with direction. You know, they know that when they come in, they don't know what's going to happen. And when they come out, it's just like they lost 20 pounds off their shoulders. You know, they've got the help they need and they know that they can come back and they know what we have to offer. So it really truly is rewarding. 
and a lot of our patients consider us their primary care physician. Yeah, <laughs> technically yeah. we're not supposed to be, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah probably. What are you gonna do? Well, yeah. So yeah, we don't do, you know, constant refills, but they have to come back in to get those refills. And they do, they have no problem doing it. Um, we love to see return patients. It's, it's, that's very rewarding as well yeah. to see the return. Well, patients. and not to mention it was Kathy that she's been refilling people's prescriptions all through COVID. Janet. Or Janet. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so even though we were closed, thank God, you know, Janet's been such a great help and she's been refilling those and talking to the patients on the phone because we just didn't want to leave anyone hanging. Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that, yeah. that we're doing for so many that truly need us. And thank you both, um, Linda and Trish, for being on today. Um, this episode will probably start airing midweek next week. So uh, thank you very much for being on. Thank you for watching the episode and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.